Wave. We're live? I think so. Let me see. Hello, people of the interweb. You can hear me clap twice. <laughs> if you're hearing us, go ahead and give us a shout out in the comments. Suckers. Ooh, I don't think we're going live yet. Oh, here we go. We've got three people up here. Woohoo! We're doing something. Oh gosh. Too many things in my hands. Nicole's trying to balance many photos over there. I'm just going to look at the comments from my phone. Cool. Are we up? Can you see us, people? We got 12 people. Who are. Hello. People clapped. I need to get closer to you. That's what they've been saying. Okay. We're better. Closer. Get closer to Megan. Can't hear Megan. Oh, hi guys. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Doug and Chris know each other. Hey, Doug and Chris. <laughs> this afternoon. I'm Megan. I am a field instructor here. If you heard me before, we've got Nicole behind the camera. You'll see her more tomorrow and then I'll be behind the camera, which is awesome. Um, We're going to go ahead and continue with day number two of our Citizen Science Week, which is awesome. If you missed it yesterday, if you missed Maria and Emma talking about seagrass surveys or Anna introducing our Citizen Science topics, to go ahead and recap that, we were talking about Citizen Science programs here, all of our awesome programs we do. Now, citizen science basically just means the participation and collaboration of every scientific research to gain some scientific knowledge, some scientific understanding, which is what we're going to be doing today. We are talking about marine debris, which I have set up here, and we're going to be going into our green lab to talk about microplastics, which is awesome. Now, if you haven't already checked out our virtual Facebook page, I have posted a few things on there. We have, if you go to marinelab.org, go on the What We Do tab, click down, find our virtual page. Under Citizen Science, I've created an activity sheet that you guys can utilize if you want. Basically, it hits home with some key takeaways and then gets you thinking about how you can interact with your communities. Take what we've talked about here and incorporate that, giving us some standards of what we did last year. Has some numbers of all the things we have collected, all the debris we weighed, which is crazy. Do we have a question? No, not yet. It just paused for a second, but I think we're good. Okay, good, good so far? Easy. All right, I will let you guys know too, if there is a long pause between when you've typed, is a solid minute delay when you guys type on our Facebook page versus when we can see it. So we will get to your questions, no worries. Nicole behind the camera will read them out to me and I'll answer them. And if we don't get to your question over this, I will be responding in the comments after we are done going live. Sounds good? All right, let's go ahead and get started. So you guys, our first marine lab citizen science program we're talking about today is marine debris. I've got all of our tools set up down here. Marine debris is basically the term for man-made materials that end up in the marine environment, right? So man-made things, things like, Marine debris programs here. We do some land 
is cleanups, which we basically just go around right in this area. We get our community that is immediately around us. We walk outside property, start cleaning up our community. Sometimes we also do snorkel-based cleanups, which can be really fun. We get in those mangrove communities, which you guys can see up here. Now, if you have an idea, I want you to go ahead and type in the comments why do you think it's important that we clean up our mangrove communities. Certainly all of our lands and all along the edge there, that's all of our mangrove communities. So we go around here, we also go into Blackwater Sound, which is really, really cool. So if you think you know why we would want to clean up mangrove communities, well, let me know. So far, no comments. No comments. It's the lag. It's the lag. Talk about the lag. The lag is real. The lag is happening. Any mangrove ideas? Any, any, any. There's a few reasons why we want to clean up our mangroves and our communities in general, right? We want to clean them up. Get all this debris that we've made out of these areas. Why? Oh, we got one. Yes. Mangroves are essential habitat for small animals and they absorb nutrients that can be detrimental to coral health. You're right, Chris. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. That's a really good reason why we want to clean up those mangrove habitats. Imagine all this like plastic and stuff that's on our mangroves, right? That would totally destroy it from eliminating this 100%. Any other reasons? No. All right. Well, Chris kind of nailed it on the head. Now here. And Marine Lab, we have this very fancy data sheet. Marine debris data sheet, right? We work with Moat Marine Lab, and we also work with John Cunningham State Park with these, okay? So our Marine Lab, well, this whole section here is dedicated to fishing gear, and then we have some dedicated to plastics, and then others in general. The reason we focus on fishing gear here is because part of our collaboration with Moat Marine Lab we send our findings, our amounts of debris, to Dr. Hole over there, and she really looks at this fishing gear because she looks at how fishing gear can affect eagle rays and other marine mammals and how it affects their life, so to say, over there, which is really cool. Now this data sheet, you guys, simple. It's a piece of paper, right? If you guys want to get involved in your communities, really simple, all you have to do, get a piece of paper, start filling it out. Now some of the tools we use to collect it, just a little, easy luggage scale, like this one here, right? I'm sure if you were to go raid your parents' drawers, you might find it. It's really simple. All you have to do is get a luggage scale, maybe a kitchen scale, maybe just a general weight scale, right? You guys can go ahead, get out in your communities, start grabbing some trash, weighing it, get a nice data there. If you do live in a community where you see a lot of fishing gear, like we do down here in Keys, right? In the Keys, we have lots of people fishing all the time, so we do tend to see more fishing. Uh, debris, so to say. So we have all this awesome stuff to go ahead and measure out our fishing line. Have you guys seen fishing line before? This stuff is crazy. It gets left behind. These things can be super, super long. So that one, right, fishing line, if you've ever held it, weighs pretty much nothing. So with those, we like to measure the length. So if you live in an area where you do see a lot of fishing and you want to get out there and start cleaning it up, you can also look at some fishing line. Just get some measuring tape. I'm sure you guys have that there. Right? Weigh it up. Collect all of your data. And then what I want you guys to do too, if you're going to get involved and do this, which is awesome like our students do here, I want to know what you guys are finding. We all want to know what you guys are finding. So make sure you let us know. Shout out to us, Facebook. What's the other big social? Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, right? Let us know. Email us. Let us know what you guys are finding because we love to have you guys let us know how you're getting involved. But it's pretty cool. I know we had a few schools here this year who've already participated in some marine debris collection and they've collected over 100 pounds just within our community, which is really, really awesome. If you're looking on that infographic that was on our virtual page, it has how much debris we've collected over the years of doing this here as it goes away. Andy has a question. She wants to know, where do we report data and get data collection sheet from? So this data collection sheet, that's a really good question. We made this here at Marine Lab, right? This is our data collection sheet. You can see we've kind of adapted it to us. So we have our school names here, the date, the instructor names, right? All of this is kind of good information.
information from the lab because when we enter and collect our data, we keep it a copy of it here for ourselves so we know what we've been doing. And then we send it out to John Penny Camp State Park, which if you look at this map, it's essentially where that star is, you guys? Right below, that's where that is. And then we also send it off to Mogari Lab, so that way they can look at it there as well, because they use it for their research there. So it's really important that we collect it, we send it off, get it to the scientists, also keep it here for us so we know what we that was a good question. Any other questions? Yeah, right? We're in debris. Pretty fun, pretty easy. Love it. And you guys too, I want you guys to know that while marine debris and collecting marine debris, doing these cleanups in your area, I think they're really great. Personally, I do them all the time. I know the instructors here, we really like to get in there and clean up our communities. But I want you guys to really know that this is not really the solution. Cleaning it up is not really the solution, right? It's great, it gets us in our environment, it gets it out of our environment, but the solution is to properly dispose of our trash in the first place, right? You kind of reduce some of our trash, properly dispose of it. So when you think, oh, I'm gonna take this crumpled up piece of paper, or this wrapper, and make sure I put it in the trash can, right? Make sure it gets in there, that way it's not just like, Poof, I'm done eating this, let it go, let it end up in our marine environment, right? So that kind of ties in really nicely with our next one. So we're going to go ahead and head into the Green Lab. If you look above the door, it says Green Lab. Oh, okay, green lab. All right, in here we have our microplastics lab. And I really like this marine lab to this science program because it really gets us involved with how all this debris is kind of affecting our waters around here. Now, while we talk about this, Yeah, see him. It's gridded. And we take a look at it underneath the microscope. Anyone? Yeah, we got plastic equals oil. Okay. Any other ones? No, okay. Plastic equals oil, yeah. I mean, anything else we've got there? Plastic, plastic, plastic. What is it? Is it natural? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna say no. no, it's not natural. I'll, <laughs> I'll be. Says, no. <laughs> Maddie says it's in everything. It's in everything. Well, Maddie's not wrong. It is pretty much in everything, right? It is. This is plastic, right? I was recently looking through all of my products at home, like all my hair care and my sunscreen, and you guys, I found plastic in my sunscreen. But, you know, prove me wrong. Plastic was in my sunscreen that I discovered, which is crazy. So if you want, you can go home. Look at all of your hair care, face care, sunscreen, and if you see the word polyethylene in that, you guys, that's plastic. That's plastic in your stuff, which is crazy. I had no idea that when I was trying to protect myself from the sun, I had plastic in my sunscreen, which is crazy. Anyone else? All right, you guys. Well, it isn't everything. Plastic isn't everything. Plastic is basically a synthetic material made up of a ton of organic polymers, right? When I say that, I'm talking about things like PVC, Things like nylon, nylon in your clothing, right? Things like polyethylene, all that stuff, all those organic polymers, they make up plastic. Which is right, plastic is in everything, you guys. If you check the label on your t-shirt, you may have plastic in it. If it's not like 100% cotton or 100% wool, 100% natural material, then there is definitely some plastic in it, which is crazy. And microplastics, you guys, is a plastic that is fine. told you guys what this is. The podcast is interrupted. Down. Hold on, we're going to pause for a second.
All right, we're good now. Go. Okay, cool. Sorry, we're watching this and it said it was interrupted. So fragments, you guys, bigger piece of plastics that have been broken down. Microfibers, these are the big one right here, all right? Microfibers are what come from your pieces of clothing, right? When you wash your t-shirts or your shorts or whatever you're wearing that have plastic in it, little tiny pieces of plastic break off of those and they enter into the water system, which is crazy. We have things like microbeads, you guys. These are the ones that, if you have like an abrasive scrub for your face, it was like perfectly spherical. This is like this, like film, like if you think about a plastic bag. So these are kind of the microplastics that we tend to see here. Now I pulled up one, maybe I'll kill it. All right, if you guys look up at that big screen, if you can see it, this is a microfiber that we found. Good morning this morning, the snorkel effect any microplastics. We already have these. This was from last April, so a year ago. They took this from our reef called North North Dry Rocks. If you guys have been in Marine Lab, snorkel there. This is from that reef here. Can you see that, right? That is not natural. If you guys can see that color, that is blue, bright blue piece of microfiber. So that's plastic that was in the water. It's a one liter sample of water that we filter when we get all this. So that's crazy, right? Now if we were to switch it and look at our laundry waste water, shout out when you see it. There's one. Two next to each other. Look at that. Right? So, this marine citizen started getting involved with collecting this data on the plastics that we can't really see, right? Marine jewelry, we talk about all the debris that we can see that we can go collect. Microplastics, we talk about the debris that we can't really see with you know, the naked eye without a microscope. No microscope up there, too. So, you can get a better look at it. I'm going to go check my lights back on. Can you touch? While she's doing it, I'm gonna say hi to Billy. We miss you. <laughs> Is Billy in here? Billy's on here. Oh, <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna show you guys our data sheet through this. Because with our microplastics, right, we're all about collecting science, collecting this data, but we wanna submit it. Right? We work with the Florida Microplastics Awareness Project. They were founded in 2015. And so so again, right, this is Marine Lab because when we work with our schools, we need to know which school for us. We need latitude and longitude, and we also need time when we are collecting um, data, when we're collecting data, right? We need the time, we need the date, and we need the area it was taken because without that information, it's pretty hard, right, to know what this data means. We need to know exactly when and where it was from. So that's very important too. So if you guys are gonna get out there and start collecting some data, make sure you take down your name, right? The date, the time it was collected, and where you were, right? So that way we can start forming a database with that information. Now down here, we have, once we go through our one liter samples, we tally up how many we find. And then we go ahead and enter that data online. So if you guys wanna check them out, especially if you're in Florida, the Florida Microplastics Awareness Program, um, you guys can go ahead and people have collected this information where they've sent it off to them, it's been entered into their database and it's a map and you can click on little, they're like little icons, like little drop locations. You can click on those and it tells you how much plastic has been found in those areas, which is crazy cool. And if you always want to, if you wanna, you know, think about how you can take this microplastics, because it's probably really hard to find all of this tools, all, all of this right here in your house to start collecting your own microplastic samples. I mean, I know, I for sure don't have it. Nicole, do you have it? Nope, we live in the same place. No. <laughs> so, true question. Uh, we don't have this either. So the ways we think that we can start tackling this plastics problem, right, how we can start contributing to the science is to help reduce our plastic waste. So we have to stick to the big R's, right? Reduce, reuse, refuse, and then recycle, right? We want to start reducing the amount because the amount of microplastics, right, the amount of debris in the ocean, it's not really gonna change, right? It's already in there. We wanna limit the amount that's getting in there on top of that, right? Because if you think about these plastics, you think about those pieces that are up there, if you can still see them, they're really, really small. Do you guys remember what Pat and Emma took live? They did a whole lab dedicated to it. Small, tiny things. Starts with a Z. 
ends with an O plankton. <laughs> wow! So much. Nice to call. that are in the water, it's really, really hard to get them out of the water and just get those out. It's really hard to select only the plastics and not the plankton, right? So that's why we would like to, at least on our case, you know, we want to refuse. We want to help limit the amount that we have going into the water. And, you know, rejoice because that can also look like you not washing your clothes as much. You stain in those dirty clothes often. You can tell your parents, I told you to do that. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> um, if you don't need a hat at Marine Lab 2, oh. you guys can look over your sky and watch your people. Okay. Our plastic sludge, you guys. So this is something really awesome that uh, reduce our plastic waste. Why there is a link to our plastic sludge. So if you guys want to go ahead, if you want, you don't have to. You guys know how to fill in that plastic pledge. Think about how you can take what we've talked about here about this citizen science, think about how you can incorporate in your life, right? Because we all don't have the tools to physically look at all the plastics in the water, but we have the tools ourselves within our homes, right? To help limit the amount of plastics we are putting out into the environment. So you guys go ahead and take that plastic pledge. You guys can like virtually sign this. So these are all of our students from last year that took the plastic pledge, signed it. My signature's on here somewhere. It's like a little scribble somewhere. It's been totally covered to a lot of awesome students. Which is awesome, you guys. So those are two of my favorite citizen science programs. Do you guys have any questions with any questions that are asked during and Oh, gosh. Nicole's <laughs> throwing things. Good job, uh, Nicole. I should have been looking. Any Chris's questions? daughter has been answering all of our questions correctly. So shout out to Chris's daughter. Woo, good job. Andy asked how they could participate as citizen science. Is there a website to send their data to for both marine debris and microplastics? For marine debris, yeah. Uh, you guys for sure, for sure send your science, your data, data to us, right? Because then we can go ahead and send it out as well. It depends on which area you are into, right? Where you're gonna, if you're collecting marine debris, depends on where you're located. Um, I can definitely do some research too. I'm not sure off of which areas you're in, where you would go ahead and send that data, but I could do some research, comment down below, you know, figure out where you guys could send that off to. The microplastics, if you guys are located in Florida, for sure look up this Florida Microplastics Awareness Project. Zoom in on the name there. Right, you guys can go ahead and submit your data to them too. If you have the tools, they're one of those lucky people who have the tools to be able to look at the microplastics in the area, I'll for sure send them to them. This is awesome. Awesome. Do we have any more questions? Concerns? Any concerns? Anything you want to know about Megan or myself <laughs> and our microplastic slash plastic? I will tell you. Prevention. That sunscreen dropped to me. Got my sunscreen had plastic in it. I mean, even think about it. I don't want plastic on my skin. I don't want to put something weird. All right, it's catching right. up to us slowly. Catching up. We'll give it a few more minutes. See if we have any. Yeah. We'll go ahead and type back to them. We, we have a question from Rob. Rob is asking, are microplastics showing up in zooplankton? They are, Rob. That's a very good question. I can comment with a link to a paper that was written, if you want, about how plankton are totally ingesting plastics. Because one of the concerns, right, with microplastics is how it's affecting the marine community. We know a few things, right? We know it's in the water. We know our marine organisms are eating it, but we don't know things like how they're affected by it. We know a few, a few things have been coming out with how some animals and organisms are affected by it, but we for sure know that plankton are eating plastic, which is crazy. There's a video where you can see the plankton ingest all the plastic and it like works their way through their intestinal system. It's crazy. It's scary too. Anna wants to reduce plastic. Good question. So some ways to reduce plastic, right? Washing your clothes, right? Just go smelly for the rest of it. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, some ways to reduce some maybe, maybe pretty easy. Uh, if you guys have plastic water bottles, maybe every day you go out and you buy a plastic water bottle, use it, throw it away, right? Maybe instead of doing that every day, you can reuse it. That could be a good way. Uh, if you are able, you could invest into a reusable water bottle. Some simple things like using paper bags at the grocery store instead of plastic bags. Those are also really, really good. I know Nicole and I this week, we are going to attempt to make our own beeswax wraps instead of using plastic wraps. So that's another thing if you want to get creative in the home, you know, stuff like that. Do you have any suggestions, Nicole? I think you hit most of the ones we do in our home, like the easy ones. 
I don't know if any of that just came up because it says broadcast is interrupted. I hope it did. Chris, Chris has a question, though, now that we're back online. Have you seen evidence of microplastics affecting marine? I don't know. Have you? I haven't personally seen it in mammals. I wouldn't be shocked. We've seen it in sea turtles, a lot in sea turtles because they ingest babies, and that's been seen especially down here in our turtle hospital. Mammals, I would assume it's affect them, but I'm sure scientists around the world have. Yeah, yeah, I haven't personally read about that, but I'm sure if you were to give it a quick Google on a database, like Google Scholar maybe, I'm sure there are a few papers written about it as well, which is crazy. I can also look into that too if you want. Happy to do it. Paul asked if we are seeing reductions in plastic locally here in Key Largo. Ooh, good question, Paul. I've only been in the long term, so within the year, I don't know if I've seen any lowering of it, but I bet if we would ask some of the people who have been here for longer, um, like maybe our director, Sarah, she's probably seen it because we have a lot of debris cleanups that happen around here, which is awesome. And I know a lot of our grocery stores, they have a ton of paper bag options. They also, if you look at it on the bottom of the plastic bags from the grocery stores we get here, they have the option to bring it back into the store, they recycle them, and then make them into more plastic bags that they can use, which is really cool. Anna has said that straws have been reduced down here in the Keys, so that's a big one. Pretty much everywhere in South Florida, I would say, it's very hard to find a plastic straw. That is true. Straws were a big one. Something that's very simple, right, to take out a plastic straw, put in a nice little paper. They have little um, noodle straws. I don't know if you guys have seen those. They have a noodle straw. Which is that one is pretty cool said whales have been known to ingest plastic bags so that's your question or your answer to Chris's daughter about mammals yeah we have some whales ingesting stuff then I know whale sharks have this crazy cool ability where they ingest mm. hey, thank you for tuning in if you have any more questions we didn't get to we'll for sure hit you up in the comments otherwise we will see you guys back here tomorrow too for a new call you get to see the face behind the voice and then I get to be the voice <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Thank you.